What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Samuel Richards here, Common Sense Bodybuilding, and today we're going to be talking about the elusive subject of the mind-muscle connection. What is it? Why is it touted by many of the greats as the key to their success in bodybuilding? How can you improve it and learn how to master that mind-muscle connection? Well, today we're going to be delving into that topic, so without further ado, let's get into it. So what is the mind-muscle connection? Uh, the mind-muscle connection is a fairly intangible part of training as a bodybuilder. It's a form of mental intensity whereby you can focus in on the minute details of your training and mentally try to trigger certain muscle groups to take more of the load. It's a very intangible subject and it can be quite strange for people to grasp, but if you do bodybuild, then you know full well that this is a thing and it's just as elusive as people make it out to be. But the truth is it can be practiced and mastered. Just because we're not quite sure what exactly it works on, it does not mean there aren't ways that are tried and tested to help you improve your mind-muscle connection. So today we'll delve into some of them. But before we do that, I just wanted to briefly mention why it's beneficial. And a lot of people will be saying here, well, the important thing is the load and, and volume and all that kind of thing. But the truth of the matter is, the quality of the rep is an incredibly important part of training. The ability to specifically target certain areas of a muscle group in order to exhibit results in a certain way for a certain aesthetic goal is incredibly powerful. And the mind-muscle connection has benefits beyond just training itself through to your stage presence, your posing, and all kinds of other aspects of the world of bodybuilding. So how do you go about improving it? First of all, is your exercise selection. What kind of exercises are you doing throughout your workouts? Are you doing exercises which specifically work on a resistance profile which really help you to build a mind-muscle connection? Are you doing unilateral movements? Are you using machines with angles which help you to target certain muscle groups? Certain exercises will simply be better for mind-muscle connection. For example, over a barbell row, it's much harder to specifically focus in on one muscle group when it requires so many different areas of the back in order to perform that movement along with the arms and all kind of other supporting muscles. A compound lift will always be harder to develop a mind-muscle connection on and that's not to say that they're not important, they are integral to any workout routine that is a hill that I'll die on. However, it's also important that you use the specific movements which help you to build a mind-muscle connection, which help you to work on certain very specific targeted areas of the muscle and which aid you in building the physique that you want to have one day. If you have a weak lower back, for example, there's no point just doing barbell rows. You're gonna to need to do a variety of movements which engage it in different ways. Leading on for that, the second point is form tweaks. If you're performing a leg extension, this is something which can often end up being a fairly autonomous movement for many people. They sort of just go through the motions and they're like, I just need to get this up, swinging their body, doing whatever needs be to get that weight up. Truth of the matter is though, this is a movement which can be incredibly powerful for specificity. If you change the angle of your feet to point a certain way, you can target the outer sweep of the quad more, for example, in my experience. If you change how wide or narrow your stance is, you can actually make sure that you're engaging different parts of your thigh. And all of these things add up to help to develop the my muscle connection, because the more you learn about angles and the way you perform a movement in order to connect with certain areas of the muscle specifically, not just the quads in general. That will enable you to learn the cues that are key for developing a better mind-muscle connection while you're performing the movement. So there's a real circular benefit to doing this. You need to ensure that the movements you're trying to work on your mind-muscle connection with, you're tweaking it. You're making sure that the angle is correct. That, for example, if you're trying to develop your back, you want to make sure that you're doing movements where you can pinch the shoulder blades together, really get that strong contraction and full range of motion. So these both lead into each other, choosing the right exercises and performing them in the right way to create the most engagement with a desired area. The third way that you can help to build and develop your mind muscle connection is again through the way you're performing those movements. A lot of this is in the gym and most of the benefits and the building of this will be within the gym. So the third element is tempo. The speed in which you perform the movement. Slowing it down enables you to think about what you're engaging, think about what you're doing. And this is something that I see all the time. People just run up to a cable machine and just start curling for the fuck of it. It's like, 
are you not thinking about the angle that you're performing the movement in, about what you're trying to target? Are you not trying to lock in and hone in mentally in the, the movement that you're performing? It's confusing to me that people just go straight in without any prep work, without any amping themselves up, without any mental focus. They just walk up to a machine and start lifting in any manner. Jerking a movement around, just forcing it up, you're never going to be able to have the same level of intensity and focus on the muscle that you're training as if you were to perform that movement slowly. It's going to enable you to focus on the quality of the contraction, not just getting it done. And point number four, as I said, is linked to this. It's reducing that weight down, guys. Come on, no ego lifting if you're looking to develop a high quality mind-muscle connection. When the weight is too heavy, you can't prevent other body parts from coming in and playing their part to get that weight shifted. It's hard to slow it down and, and bring the tempo down as you need to, or to focus on the movement or your range of movement when that's going to be restricted by the weight that you're trying to lift. Again, this doesn't mean that lifting heavy is a bad thing. It's the same as compound movements. They all have their part to play within the routine. And you've got to make sure that you're not doing something like a cable rope pullover the same way that you do a deadlift. They're very different movements that work in different ways for different purposes. You also need to perform them differently. And the fifth point, and one of the most important for me, and most neglected, is posing. There's a reason why my Instagram is a lot of me posing, because I like to pose after every session. It's a masterclass in muscle specificity. Honestly, you need to know how to contract and, and expand certain muscle groups in a certain way to hit a certain look within a pose. For example, you have to learn the cues to pull your lats out properly. It's not just a one motion thing. It can take a couple of steps for some people to really engage with their lats and, lats and mentally be able to bring them out in the right way for say a front double bicep. And it's also a workout in of itself. Posing when done correctly is intense, it's taxing. It requires you to keep multiple areas of your body posed, locked in, at the same time. And this obviously is going to require you to be able to mentally focus on contracting that muscle in the right way and not letting it be affected by the other areas. And this can be really, really helpful within your training and advancing that mind-muscle connection once again, because it's not just about what you're doing in the gym. This is a discipline. It's something which takes lots of practice. So lots of posing, lots of thoughtfulness, mindfulness within your training about how you're performing the movement. Am I doing this too quickly? Am I thinking through how I'm performing this movement? Just because you know how to perform a deadlift doesn't mean you should walk up to the bar every single time and just jerk it up. It means that you need to think through those cues, remind yourself, because the amount of times that I've let myself get carried away with weight, and I put the form cues to the back of my mind, I know roughly what they are, but I'm not, I'm maybe skipping over parts, and it ends up detrimentally affecting your progress at the end of the road. And I often have to step back and go, okay, I've hit a new PV now, now let's step back and focus on how I'm performing the movement. These are simple tips that you can take into your training in order to help to build the mind-muscle connection, but a lot of it is about your intensity. What kind of person are you in the gym? Do you let yourself get distracted or not? Do you have hype music? You know, how do, a lot of these factors are going to affect how mentally intense you can get. And I believe that, honestly, you've got to really love the training. You've got to be chasing the pump, the contractions. You've got to really have experience on the gym floor in order to build a high-quality mind-muscle connection. But all of these tips can help you to get there faster and help you to truly master it and not just rely on potluck to have the best training session of your life. You can have it every week. If you're interested more in mentality and bodybuilding, just check out the stoicism video that I published. I'll be producing more content on these kind of topics. But in the meantime, please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Click the bell to be notified when we post next, which will be over the next couple of days with a whole bulking guide. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.